That scene in Pulp Fiction where Travolta opens up the briefcase. I mean, that was gold in there, right? Okay, so welcome back. Today I figured we'd get into a lighter topic. You're tired of hearing about availability and silver going to the moon, so this is something that comes up over and over. And that's something, it's treasure chests. Actually, the word that comes up is storage. But storage is a boring word and I didn't want to do a boring video. Now I've talked a little bit about how I vault some of the gold that I have and that just gets some of the gold out of my house so I have a little less to worry about when I'm traveling. It also gives me some other options with allocating gold and actually earning interest. Now everyone seems to have a different take on that idea though and that is fine. The majority here feel that if you don't have immediate access to your gold, well bad things can happen. So home safes or hiding spots or home safes in hiding spots well, that's a topic that I'm just not super interested in getting into. I'll just say that personally, I have a number of safes that would be pretty easy to find if you cased my house. It would be a lot harder to find my gold, though. You'd come away with a bunch of documents and neither of us would be happy. The bigger safes are bolted to the floor. They'd be a little harder to get knocked over and pried open, but there's no gold in there either. So because I handle valuables like gold differently than documents or guns, I don't really know how to make a helpful video on that part of the topic. Because you can't really go to the store and buy the kind of setup I have. My safes are hidden, they're built into my home. It would just be hard to make any kind of recommendation for anyone else to do something similar. But people ask a lot about storage and the sense of organization as well. And that's pretty universal. I can tell you about capsules, I can tell you about tubes, and I can tell you about cases. Now, I've already made a video on capsules, and I, I leave a link to that video in the description of every video I put out. I also have direct links to popular capsules in those descriptions as well. Now, I use direct fit airtight capsules, and I also use airtight tubes. Coins go in the capsules, capsules go in the tubes, and then, well, the tubes go in cases. Gripping stuff, right? Now, the cases I use for gold are pelican cases. They are stackable. They're easy to grab. And they're just a nice way to keep everything organized and in one place. Now, there are a bunch of different Pelican cases I suppose you could use. I like this particular one. It's a good size. It's the Pelican 1060. I will drop a link to it in the description. And I have a few other options for silver as well. Now, previously I was keeping silver in Plano field boxes or marine boxes. The obvious reason being that those are larger. They are also stackable though. And honestly, I wasn't as worried about hiding the silver in the deep storage, but these did take up a lot of room. I use the OD green field boxes for ammo or certain supplies, and then I use the orange marine boxes for anything I'm a little more concerned about humidity for. I imagine a lot of you have seen these before, links in the description if you want them, but these are just kind of a great all around case. They run about $10 each. Now the Pelican cases, they're a little bit more sturdy. They cost a little bit more. They run about $30. I use these Pelican cases for my knives as well, and I should have grabbed that one because it has a foam insert. But I guess you'll see how that works if you hit the links in the description. Now, you could use those foam cutouts for your gold as well. Basically, you've got a block of foam that you have to cut out, but I've never done that for the gold. And I guess that reminds me, I usually throw a Shemag in the Plano field boxes just to kind of help pack everything in. And... <laughs> If you're wondering what a shemag is, well, I guess uh, I will link that up as well. Now, a shemag is basically a scarf, a uh, kafia scarf, but shemag just sounds cooler. This seems like I'm drifting now, but I do like shemags for a lot of reasons. I use them in cold weather, I use them on the trails, but I just think they're good to have available for a lot of different reasons. It's $10 again. So I have a lot of these Plano field boxes, and I have a lot of Pelican cases too. I have them in different sizes. Basically, everything that I purchase in high volume and I want to stack, I use the Plano field boxes. And then the little things that I find especially valuable, well, I use the Pelican cases for those. I got my son one of these boxes for Pokemon cards. Now, these are cool. I grab them for Christmas gifts as well, load them up with whatever. But the cases are about as cool as anything. Again, they're a little like treasure chests. So here we are. A couple of grown adults talking about fancy boxes for our stuff. Actually, I'm not sure I'd call these fancy. They're more utilitarian. But here's the thing. Buying gold coins is a quick hit of dopamine or happiness, however you want to look at it. And that kind of dies off pretty quickly once you drop them in your safe 
or your rose garden or your secret bunker or whatever you do. And having them in a nice case lets you get them back out quickly and easily. Another thing I like about these is that they only have so much space. They work a little bit like a monster box by giving you a finite goal to fill them up. Now these would fit maybe four mint tubes and four 10 ounce bars. So that'd be 120 ounces of silver. They'll fit two tubes of capsuled gold and four slabs. You know, maybe that's 44 ounces of gold, whatever. I mean, you get the idea. And I don't know what this right here is. It looks like it's probably about 20 ounces or so. So I have a ways to go. I mean, actually, I'll make another trip to the vault rather than store 44 ounces of gold in one place. Maybe I just need a smaller case. <laughs> but I do think I would be on track for that 24 ounces, maybe. Yeah, all this talk about not being in a rush and taking it easy until premiums come down. And I think I'm four or five ounces into 2021 already with 10 months to go. So I guess if I did keep it all at my house, I could see the case fill up through the year. And that kind of thing motivates me. And maybe since this is a channel about gold and not a channel about plastic boxes, maybe I should show a few of these coins anyway. These again are my 2021 purchases so far. I found a 2021 Buffalo and a 2021 American Gold Eagle. Now these are my top choices, of course. I was able to find each of them at a decent price despite scarcity and typically high premiums. So I was pretty happy with both of these. And then the half ounces. I got two half ounce American Gold Eagles as well. I've stuck to my plan of buying one of these each month. It's not really important. But I have a 2020 and a 2021 here. I actually really like this size and I've found both of these for decent premiums. They, uh, they tend to go on sale so you really have to watch for them because fractional premiums have, have really gone up in the last two months. And then I grabbed this Perth Mint Lunar Year of the Monkey. Now, really, this one's for my daughter, so I don't really count it. It's part of my 2021 goals, I guess. And then I grabbed this Perth Mint Swan. Now, this is really the only coin last year that I wanted at the time, but I passed on to try to stick to my standard choices. And I, I caved in partially because I said I'd get something atypical with some channel revenue, and then also partially just because it is a great coin. It's one that I thought my kids would like someday. And you can say it's kind of a feminine coin because it's a swan, but you know, I, I think it's actually really a, a great coin. It's, I think it's one of the standout coins of 2020 for sure. Okay, so I think that should probably do it. I mean, we've shown some gold, we've shown some plastic boxes to put the gold in. I don't know what else there is to do. I hope you're enjoying your weekend or weekday if you're watching this after the fact. Either way, I appreciate you watching. Let me know in the comments if you have a fancier storage setup than I do. And if you want to map out where you keep your treasure as well, feel free to let us know that too. While you're there, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting. And check out the description if you want links to any of the basics that I showed today. Thank you again. I hope you're doing well. Take care.